Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tea Time and Whoosh. First off, Blizzard is saying that they're down to make some changes in Heart of the Swarm. Cool. Blizzard reminds us that this beta has already been the entire length of the Heart of the Swarm beta, and it looks like what's going to happen is we'll have a month of large changes left over where we can still make big stuff, and the rest of the time we'll be polishing and working on making well, things perfect, and then ooh, we will have the fantastic Legacy of the Void, hopefully this year. So, Protoss Warpin changes are happening, and this is so good because this is a real and interesting and solid and fantastic defender's advantage in the Protoss matchups that we've been hoping for for a very long time. It's finally here. We'll have defender's advantage once again in Protoss, and uh, I think that's going to make a lot of people happy. A lot of changes are going to have to happen as a result of this happening, uh, but I think that they're all they'll they'll all be good change. Will all be good. The one thing that's different from the last update that we got is that the Nexus has been added in. So it's not that the Nexus will produce power, it's that pylons that touch the Nexus will have that faster warp in power, which will be a different color. And I think the, the question that's on all our minds, you know, what color is that going to be? Blue, normal, great. Will purple be the cool warp in? Will it be gold of like the golden armada? Uh, similar also to blue and, and gold minerals, link up there. Huh? It's difficult to tell, but we don't stray away from those hard-hitting questions here on Tea Time. Terran mules are being removed, and I think this is great because it actually affects scan in an interesting way. So before, scan cost you a mule, or cost you 270 minerals. Now, scan costs you not dropping supply, which is 130 minerals, I think, on average. A lot of it depends on the, the distance traveled by the SCV, but you have 100 for the cost of the uh, the supply depot itself, and then you have the added lost mining time from the worker, which is, I think, average is about to you know 30 to 40 minerals. In any case, big cost reduction, even if it was 50 minerals, big cost reduction on the scan. That means Terrans will be able to scan more at less cost to them, making less randomness in the game, making, I think, a better overall game experience for all the Terran matchups. Chrono Boost is being removed, and to me, this is sort of, I was really hoping for Chrono Boost to stick around. Um, we did have this option one, option two, these two column, column A, column B kind of a thing. I was really hoping a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, you know, that kind of little bit of nuance going on there. Because Chrono Boost to me is interesting in the way that Creep is interesting because there's decision going on there. It's not just, oh, you just go back to your base and you Chrono Boost. It's, are you going to Chrono Boost probes right now? Or are you going to Chrono Boost Warp Gate? Or are you going to Chrono Boost Blink? Or are you going to save your Chrono Boost for Blink? Or a plus one? You're going to try to make this timing. It makes the build diversity of Protoss a lot more interesting. Uh, and I think it's fun. I think it's fun to make that choice about what am I going to Chrono Boost? And having the idea is like, oh, what if I save Chrono Boost here and then use it over here? Uh, maybe move it to 50 energy and put the Nexus energy up to 200 like the command center. Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly the best way to do it, but I think keeping Chrono Boost around makes things more interesting uh, and fun, I think, for Protoss. So I think maybe maybe we keep Chrono Boost. That's, maybe that's that's my idea. Maybe we, maybe we bring it back. But we're going to test. And that's, like, I think, the main point here is we're going to test out having these macro mechanics not there and seeing what it's like. And finally, Zerg Inject is being nerfed and autocasted. So it would be insane if we just gave autocast injects. Uh, Zergs would rule the world, uh, you know, which would be really fun for all of you Zergs out there, but it'd be not fun for everyone else. So, you know, they said, okay, we're going to bring it down to two. Um, personally, I think it would be much better instead of having autocast. Autocast feels kind of clunky to me. I feel like. The, the hatchery itself should be adjusted in either speed that larva is produced uh, or maximum larva per hatchery that can be banked or a little bit of both. I feel like you should be able to mess with those levers in a way that produces a balanced result. But I think that making inject autocast is a much easier way to maintain things. Maybe they already tried some stuff with the hatchery and it didn't work out, or maybe the development process would be too long and Blizzard doesn't think it would be worth it to try things in the hatchery, or maybe they just think it's an awful idea, or maybe you think it's an awful idea. I'd be interested to see. Please leave in the comments, you know, what you think about uh, instead of having an autocast inject, just remove inject and adjust the hatchery to produce enough larva uh, so that Zerg can still remain nice and Zergy, you know? 
And they've done some internal testing with this and they found that Zerg get to creep spread a lot more. I feel like that was a no-brainer to me anyway. I th there were a lot of people out there who were like, no, don't just say, oh yeah, yeah. You just go out there and you say, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, just tons of time to spread creep now if that's what's gonna happen. Um, as if it was a ridiculous idea, but I feel like it was kind of the obvious move. And uh, I'm glad that, that, you know, I sort of got affirmed there that at least in the internal testing, Zergs get to creep so much more. And creep is such a cool mechanic. It's so interesting because it's not this sort of, you do this mechanic, you have more stuff. It's you do this mechanic, you gain an advantage in a position on the map, which I, which is like spatial and interesting. And it's also visual. You can see, all right, how strong is this Zerg? You know, you can see on the map, wow, this Zerg has crazy creep spread. And then we even had that before. Imagine how awesome it's going to be now. Uh, on the balance side of things, that's going to mean, you know, Zerg creep becomes crazy. Maybe you have to nerf it. I hope they don't nerf it because creep covering the map is one of the coolest things to me. Scans are going to be less expensive now. So maybe the, the TBZ ends up balancing out. It'd be interesting to see exactly how everything works out. There's so many variables going on. Trying to theorycraft about what is going to happen in the future is kind of useless because it's just going to be crazy uh, and awesome and lots of fun. So... Uh, I'm going to enjoy jumping in there and, and mixing it up and, and having fun and hopefully you will as well. To wrap things up, we only have a month for large changes, so I would like to make my request for two changes that I think ought to happen this month before it's too late. Number one, reduce the efficient saturation point. To me, there's nothing more important than reducing the efficient saturation point. There is nothing that will make StarCraft better in any sort of larger magnitude than reducing the efficient saturation point. What the efficient saturation point is at currently is 16. It's the point, it's not the point at which you can't make any more workers to get income. It's the point at which each worker is going to mine less than the one before. It starts to dip off, right? And the reason why bringing that down becomes useful is that getting more expansions becomes more valuable. And in Legacy of the Void especially, there are a lot more expansions being taken, but there's not as much benefit from the expansions to auto sort of offset that from Heart of the Swarm, or just in general, the idea of gaining uh, a significant income boost from having more bases than your opponent, taking the risk of having lots of bases or more bases than your opponent, right? That That's a risk. The reward of that should be a higher income, regardless of your opponent's worker count. The big part about this change, what it creates, is this whole world of strategic option that has been pretty much non-existent in StarCraft II, which is cost inefficient trading. Being the player that's going to say, okay, you're gonna turtle up, I'm going to take a bunch of bases, trade cost inefficiently with you and still win because of my superior economy. Technically, that's something that can happen in StarCraft II, but it's such a weak option right now and it would be so cool, especially for Zerg, but even in the other matchups too, it'd be so cool for having an option against a turtling player rather than pushing this turtling player and say, hey, you can turtle, but only for seven minutes. And after seven minutes, you can't turtle anymore. That being said, this test, this idea is not mutually exclusive to the current Legacy of the Void economy. It's something that we can add on to it to make it more interesting, to provide more strategic options for players and just a more deep, creative, interesting game. Number two, destroy the Mothership Core. Cast it into the fire. Destroy it! Remove it from the game. Don't try to patch it, fix it, try out new abilities. It is, in its essence, a centralization of power. And the interesting thing about StarCraft is not that all the power is in one place, like a MOBA where you have one hero and that's where the power is. Maybe you have five heroes, you're five different spots. But the interesting thing about StarCraft is about not only what you have, but where it is. The positioning, where where is your stuff at what time? It's spatial and it's, it's temporal, right? Both of those things are involved. And having a hero unit that early in the game is first of all, it was a fix to defender's advantage that's no longer necessary. But second of all, it centralizes all the Protoss power. Think about recall. You wanna have all your units in one spot so you can recall. Think about um, uh, Photon Overcharge. 
that's you know creating the defender's advantage. The newer time warp, which is kind of cool. I think it's an improvement on the old time warp, but still, it's all this power put into one unit, which I think is antithetical to what StarCraft is. It's it really is the the opposite. It's not about centralizing all your power in one spot. It's about spreading the power out between many different units and controlling in different locations or flanking and positioning. And I think that it was a fix for Heart of the Swarm and it worked and it did okay. But with this warp gate change, we don't need any more. Uh, I think it's time to move on. It's time to disperse the power of the Protoss to different areas of the map instead of having to have a centralized Protoss power for them to engage, defend, etc. My name is Jack Attack, and as always, thanks for watching. If you have an idea for a video you would like me to do, please leave it with any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, or anything beginning with letter C in the comment section below, and I'll see you again soon. You're losing about 130 minerals. Be uh, fucking itches on my neck. Need to get a haircut. Anyway. Oh, my, the Protoss is scouting. Chronoboost. Chronoboost has been removed to where we need to be. In my opinion. Ah, I, I need to stop saying the word need. It's so fucking arrogant. Jesus. That's what happens when I get emotionally involved. I was like, oh, this needs to happen. It's like, no, it doesn't need to happen. It's just, um, it's just a thing that could happen. I'm gonna get a bunch of bases and trade cost inefficiently. The the main thing, the the, the essential thing that I want to bring up, up. To wrap things, to wrap things up, to wrap things up, to wrap things up. Ugh.